Hi everyone. So today's been a pretty huge day for the release of new models uh, in the text to image diffusion model space when it comes to generating any number of assets. So Facebook released make a video, which is text prompts turning into relatively coherent looking video. And there have been some other open source approaches to that that have been published by researchers, which we also covered on this channel. And what we're looking at in this video is a release from DreamFusion 3D, which is, I think at this point, the best approach I've seen at a tool that takes text prompts and creates very feature complete 3D models and 3D scenes uh, that are also textured and dynamically lit to a limited extent in one single process. So the reason that this is cool uh, is it takes tools that were usually, even like a week ago, considered entire tools in themselves. So there are stable diffusion-based um, seamless texture tools, and this incorporates that with work that we've previously seen at a high level done by NVIDIA with uh, Get3D, which is the notion that you can take a diffusion-based image model um, to produce a 3D mesh that can then be dynamically lit and viewed from a number of angles. Uh, this was more simple in terms of its capabilities of taking a complex prompt and generating something. You'll see in the work that's being produced here most of what you see are a singular object in a very simple or muted environment. So it's a single person on a white background, or it's a house with a pink roof, a green car, that kind of thing. And really, I mean, th this is still state of the art in every definition, but um, today we're looking at what Dream Fusion put out, which is some very cool work produced from predominantly Google Research, but also UC Berkeley. And this is their model. So again, this is based on a diffusion model trained on uh, image text pairs. Uh, their end result here is 3D synthesis. And they're very proud of the fact that this can be done without a huge corpus of existing 3D models, light maps, what have you, or 3D scans to get there, which previously there, there has been work done on this, but it, you know, the idea was, well, you have to train based on a lot of things. You have to train on real things you've scanned, that kind of thing. And what's cool is this model folds a lot of those things into one single flow, which they refer to in a number of different ways. Um, this gets pretty technical, but in short, they respond or they describe this as a loss based on probability density distillation that enables the use of 2D diffusion models as a prior or optimization of a parametric image generator. Using, using this loss in a deep dream-like procedure, which is a funny way of looking at it, um, pretty cool though, and we optimize randomly initialized 3D model, a neural radiance field or NERF via gradient descent such that its 2D renderings from random angles achieve a low loss, which is why they say, uh, they mentioned loss earlier. Uh, resulting in a 3D model of the given text can be viewed from any angle, but relit by arbitrary illumination. Um, important, important point here, that's not necessarily um, ray traced. It's much more simple than that. Uh, Composite into any 3D environment. Our approach requires no 3D training data. Again, they're bragging about this. Modifications of the image diffusion model, etc., cetera, uh, demonstrating effectiveness of pre-trained image diffusion models as priors. Um, so at a high level, this, is, this is, isn't exactly right, and my friends at MIT who do this for a living will, will cringe at this, but basically you could think of this as uh, kind of like a, it's similar to um, photogrammetry, except here the photogrammetry uh, gap is just, uh, it's, it's all in a model. It's not someone taking images of an actual physical object and then trying to produce something in 3D. Uh, it's generating a bunch of images as the model thinks it should look, and then using uh, a filter, like a low-pass filter of that to understand what the 3D model should be. Uh, I have no, I don't have a great sense of how the texturing is going on or how their, their lighting is going on, but um, we can talk about that later. Uh, to me, the really impressive part of this model 
is how specific and crisp it is in terms of generating scenes that have singular subjects that either are doing things or have attributes that change and, and how tight it is in generating this. So for instance, you have a squirrel, um, you can modify the material of the squirrel, including grained textures, which are definitely harder. Um, so I think that's really cool because that, that's hard to even do in stable diffusion. Um, the wrapping a, another kind of texture around sort of a primitive object um, that are separate in their own right uh, is awesome. Um, that's also really hard to do even in stable diffusion. And uh, yeah, the also like the, the actions of doing something while also being modified are, are kind of crazy. Um, again, this is a, it's something that's hard to do in existing uh, diffusion models. And um, yeah, to me that really stands out aside from this dynamic lighting um, or at least dynamic lighting just defined within the scene. Um, that's what jumps out to me as being uh, really impressive. Uh, and the cool thing also is you end up with a perfectly usable 3D mesh that you can use uh, and that is plane aware. So in other words, it's clear this is what the frog is sitting on. And uh, yeah, that, to me, it's just cool you can do this. So we'll have a second video on how this works in a bit more of like a technical sense. Uh, I'm a software engineer, so I can dig through this on my own, but in terms of explaining it to you all, um, I wanna consult some of my friends who do this professionally. They also have a set of things they've generated and I have to say, there's some really cool stuff in here. Um, for instance, something that I'm still in, really intrigued by is how they're ending up with these cool um, blurred, uh, like volumetric meshes. So you have the edges of this water phoenix here. Um, there are also a few scenes here that involve two subjects sometimes touching. So like a kitten standing on top of a giant tortoise. So this isn't a kitten with the texture of a tortoise, it's that's actually working. Um, and then there are some scenes that have a volumetric effect that is integral to the environment. So in this case, like a, a hippo in water. So clearly it knows that's water, it knows that's a pink origami hippo. And uh, it's not a singular object because like in the NVIDIA stuff, those were muted environments with singular objects. And these, uh, some of these are, very different. Um, landscapes are exceptionally hard because you, the object is the castle. The landscape is, you could argue it's an, an attribute of this aerial view prompt. And it's awesome to see that this model can pretty well um, figure out what that should look like. So like managing interactions and having strict bounds as to where that's happening, like that's bar none what is impressive about this model to me on top of the fact that you're getting all these other features. Um, so yeah, so that's what I'd say there. I think the long-term outcome of this is thinking like how is this used in something like a metaverse or something like a endlessly procedurally generated world uh, that are just big enough that you, you couldn't hire enough artists to figure out, you know, oh, you're in a house where there are cookies on the table. You know, like you, if you look at something like Star uh, Citizen, think of how many artists have had to just endlessly produce stuff. And I'm sure they have some AI tools they've used limited in like a limited capacity, but it's crazy just how, how many hours they would save using something like this, where you could have prompts in theory that were even generated by some form of model that defines a certain world or defines a certain uh, like interior environment. Uh, so I think the time savings and some of the, yeah, just the, the level of creativity to produce benign assets is even a cool use for this. Uh, oh yeah, and the other really cool one uh, showing another take at volumetrics um, is this dragon with flames. So I think what's funny here is you can see it, it's two cleverly placed images, like flat images of flame that change depending on how you're rotated around it. But uh, yeah, that's what I wanted to cover today again. Um, There'll be a link to this as long as well as their paper uh, in the description below. 
And uh, as I mentioned in a prior video from all else from today, we're working on uh, a public release for a tool that we use internally to sign uh, everyone up in like a Discord chat we have for uh, early access with these tools. Uh, so if you'd like to uh, be involved with that or you'd like to request specific services that we should look at, uh, please leave a comment below. Otherwise, I hope everyone here has a great rest of their day and I'll talk to you all soon.